You're tuning in to Pocket Change. I'm here at the University of Sydney, one of Australia's elite group today. Over the past few years, geologist Diet Mamala has spent his time here studying the act of carbon capture and storage, or CCS, worldwide. However, it wasn't to find the benefits. He believes he has found a fundamental flaw in the way these sites are surveyed that could lead to drastic consequences, including the acceleration of climate change in the years to come. Currently, CCS is not used in Australia, though over the last five years the federal government has identified and funded two sites as future carbon storage locations, one near Kuanana and Collie in Western Australia, the other in the Latrobe Valley in Victoria. CCS is touted as one of the many potential solutions to lowering the greenhouse gas emissions from power plants and large mines due to the unique way it stores carbon dioxide. The University of Adelaide's Dr John Caldy explains. Carbon capture and storage is basically three components, the first of which is capturing CO2, the predominant gas that forms uh, greenhouse gas gases relating to the um, greenhouse effect. Once we're able to separate that, concentrate that, we compress that CO2, and then we transport it. So that's the second component. And then the final part of the CCS um, value chain is the storage part. Storage effectively means taking that CO2, once it's been transported to the site that has the appropriate geology, injecting it into the subsurface, and by the subsurface I'm meaning at least a thousand meters, maybe up to three or four thousand meters. Nevertheless, Dr. Muller's research shows that over time shifting in the Earth's tectonic plates could pose a risk for future generations. Over geological time, uh, now um, uh, time is an important aspect here. The question is, uh, how, uh, to what extent do we have to worry uh, about time into the future for carbon storage, which is, uh, which is what we investigated in this project. Dr. Muller believes that the industry needs to look forward more than decades into the future and expand that scope possibly to centuries, so to fully comprehend the impact that these storage facilities could have. He said that as the continental stress fields of Australia, Asia and the Pacific collided over a significant period of time, the shifts could drastically affect CSS sites. And uh, of course these traps might be breached at some point in the future if the stress field uh, changes sufficiently uh, to breach their seal. The problem is this. Of course, we, we, we pump a CO2 into these, uh, uh, these sites and, uh, uh, and if, if carbon escapes uh, sometime uh, down the road, yes, there might be issues of, uh, of groundwater pollution, but I think most importantly, carbon will escape into the atmosphere. So I think that, that's really the main worry that we will cause delayed global warming, uh, where uh, the carbon that we think we sequestered away uh, in, in, into these sites, if it will escape sometime later. Dr. Muller stressed that this was not something that was likely to happen in our lifetime, but could harshly affect the generations ahead in their efforts to stop climate change. However, Dr. Calder claimed that this was needed in the short term, as it would help curb the 35 billion tonnes of carbon emissions the world currently emits. We're talking over the thousand years scale, and let's put it this way, if you're looking at the future of CO2 emissions, any kind of reduction that we can, even for a thousand years. Well, a thousand years is a long time, which means that over that period of time, we will probably be weaning ourselves off of our carbon economy. The federal government seems to agree with Dr. Calby. Last week, they introduced legislation to allow the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, better known as the Green Bank, to fund carbon capture and storage. Though it is currently unclear whether the forward look championed by Dr. Muller will be taken on by the CCS industry. Let us hear your thoughts below on if we need to change the way we approach CCS and answer our polling question for this story. Should CCS be seen as a feasible and sustainable effort to combat climate change? Lucas Baird, Pocket Change.